Good morning, everyone. This is Ifat, your G Plus Go To Gal, and today I am talking with Tom Rolfson about Hangouts best practices. Tom has been in the internet since the beginning of time. He's one of the 100 people who was uh, making money online, and he has been doing Hangouts since they came about, right? So, Tom, how about um, introduce yourself a little bit to tell us uh, your experience with Hangouts, and then we're going to talk about the practices. Wow. Hi. Thanks, Eva. Thanks for having me. I hope I can give you and everybody else some helpful tips. Um, yeah, my background is, is uh, I started uh, a commercial bulletin board system in 1991 and, and helped co-found the world's first global social chat message and gaming network. And um, in 1992, was uh, named by Boardwatch Magazine as one of the first 100 people in the world to make a living online. So I guess you could say I'm an old man in the business, and, and I've seen uh, seen all of it. You know, seen it all about from uh, from the beginning of time. And um, when Google Plus launched last year, um, as I was trying out all the different features, one of the uh, first things that caught my eye was Hangouts. And when I realized how easy it was to use, the way they built it with just a simple browser plugin, and and how intuitive it was for people to use. I said, this is something, this is perhaps the most powerful component of Google+, Plus, um, allowing people to communicate in the uh, most natural form, face-to-face, -face, um, brings a level of authenticity. You don't know whether it's, you know, when you're, when you're text chatting, but you, you really don't know um, who it is, where they are, anything like that. When, when you're doing face-to-face, -face, uh, making eye contact with people, it, it develops uh, authenticity and integrity. And uh, that's intimacy. This is probably the, the, the key word for that. Um, so now, when we use it for when we use it for um, personal applications, it's um, you know really valuable. Families connecting and, and people connecting with with uh, friends all over. But now businesses are learning how to use it and being able to reach out to their customers in in lots of ways. So that's how we got here. Yes. So I'm going to ask everybody here to mute your mics, except uh, Tom, so we can get the best audio. And um, Tom, let's dive in. What is, um, let's go into the technical side of things. Let's talk about the equipment, background, lights, microphone. What do you suggest people use to get the best video, light, and audio quality? Um, thanks. That's a, that's a really good place to start. And um, you know what? Uh, what we step we have to start with first of all is the PC. Making sure that you're you're on a PC with enough um, processing power and memory capabilities. If you have an older PC and you're using it, um, one of the best practices, if that's the title of what we're doing here, is, is to um, to look at best practices. One of the best practices for that is to shut down all of the absolute necessity tasks of your uh, browser. You know the Google Talk plugin and um, keep the load on the system as, as uh, light as possible. Um, from there we get into the camera. Um, typically a camera that's built into a laptop or a monitor that might have one is um, adequate to uh, um, broadcast, but if you want to step it up a little bit, um, the most common and most commonly used and, and recommended from, from the experience of many of us who've tested a lot of cameras are the Logitech C910 or the newer model, the C920. Um, almost identical specs to 920, having a little bit better capability for, for high def applications and mounting, but for um, uh, the, the average user when I hang out, um, the, uh, the 99 is more than sufficient. Um, from that, the next, uh, the next most important thing is your, your microphone. Um, if you're using like the Logitech C910 920, it's got a great dual microphone uh, system built into it. Um, that's actually what I'm using right now. From that, you can get into a USB microphone called a Snowball. Um, they've got a couple models that um, I believe one runs around 50 and another one off $80. And then you can step it up and go all the way into like a uh, dual cardioid mic uh, studio quality for, for broadcast if, if you're looking to do something like that. Um, from there, the next thing is uh, is lighting, and and lighting the same principles apply that you would use in a studio or a, a photo studio or video studio setup. You want um, a little bit of backlight, you want a little bit of side light, and you want a, a key light or a front light. 
Um, I have, let me see if I can share this with you. I have a, a very simple setup here. If this screen share is working. Are you guys able to see that properly? Are you seeing, seeing my screen share right now? Yes, yes we do. Okay. Okay, so what you're seeing right there is a simple setup with the Logitech C910 camera, and the light is, is by a company called SIMA, it's S-I-M-A, and it's the 200 LXI, and that is a variable temp, a variable brightness LED light. It can run on batteries for 45 minutes to an hour, but if you get the international version, and when we're done, we'll post these specs to the screen so everybody can see it, um, you get the international version, you can run that continuously on your AC power. Um, so that's a, and that, there you have a low-cost light under fifty dollars to give you a nice variable lighting in the front. Um, and then I guess the other the other best practice when it comes to the equipment is um, making sure you have your setup uh, much like you would encounter on a, a stage or professional audio system. You want to have your microphone so it's not directly in front of the speakers. That'll cause the feedback and, and echo. Um, Google's built in some, some great echo cancellation capability here, but if you can get any separation to your mic behind your speakers, uh, that'll make the uh, sound quality just just a uh, uh, much much cleaner. I have. Um, I'll share what I have here. Let's see if we can do that. So I I use the same camera, and then I have a switchboard <laughs> that's connected to a microphone here because I found that the camera microphone is not working that well. I get a lot of echo and probably the reason why is because my room is empty and so one of the um, things that you should pay attention to, right, is noise cancellation. And there are cheap ways of doing that, right, Tom? Um, yeah, you can, well, obvi the obvious, you know, basics of, of fabrics and, and uh, uh, sound absorbing materials in, in your studio, if you really want to get Get into uh, um, if, you, if you really want to get into um, <laughs> you, you can you can go into a whole big book on the uh, uh, live sound and, and engineer operators uh, handbook and, and get into some really advanced stuff with mixers and, and stuff. But um, you know there there are low cost acoustic damper panels that you can put on your walls or ceiling. Um, if you're in a room with carpet and curtains, that uh, that usually does a pretty decent job. Books, uh, bookshelves, uh, heavy furnitures. Uh, will also reduce the echo that you get. And it's very important to get like the best audio, right? Is it more important to get best audio more than video, Tom? Uh, I, I, I would say yes, you know, for, for, the, most, uh, for the most part. And, and we're still dealing with the limit of, of you know, the, the codec and, and the capability of, of what the Hangout can do when you start getting into to broadcasting music, if, you, if you're doing uh, hangouts for business and, and concerts or, or live music, um, they're continually working on it and improving the capabilities. Um, and likewise, the community as a whole, whether it's um, uh, Daria or, um, oh boy, so many great musicians, the, the Sweet 709 band, uh, those guys, um, Ryan Van Sickle, Heather Faye, everybody who's getting a little bit more experience on, on how uh, hangout concerts work. Another good reason to have the best audio is because if the hangouts are getting too long, and we're going to talk about that later on, you can use the audio as a podcast and have allow people to download the MP3 and listen to it on the road so they're not tied to their computer and give up watching a great hangout just because it's an hour long. Um, the next thing that I should uh, we should talk about is probably references and URL in in the hangout. Um, a lot of people are giving links and, okay guys, I'm sorry, we're talking about audio, please mute your mics. <laughs> I don't know who, where the noise is coming from. Got it? Cool. We'll open it up. So we'll open up to uh, questions. We'll take questions from the stream, from YouTube, and from the chat here in about 20 minutes. We just want to give you all the information uh, right away. So you can use that and then we're going to open it up to a discussion. So uh, another option, another um, issue is that when people are doing Hangouts, they give a lot of references, right, URLs and places to go and they point people to. If the URLs are too long, that might be an issue. Do you want to uh, talk about that, Tom? Um, well, yeah, there's, there's a couple options. You can, um, you know, use your lower third as, as Yifa and I have the, the graphic 
or uh, several others now have the graphic in um, in there. Uh, right now, there's an add-in module um, designed by uh, Moritz Salzdorf. The um, capability of generating that lower third graphic, um, and, and for for those who don't know, lower third just represents text at the bottom of the screen. It doesn't necessarily mean taking one full third of your of your screen display. Um, that's that's an industry term that's been around for a long time. And and so using that, you can put a URL for your website in there. Um, in this case, I've just put you know hangouthelp.com in there. Um, that leads to my Google Plus profile right now and uh, you know something people are going to be able to use to, to reach out if they want more assistance. But um, that's the way to do it. And then after your video or during the, the time your video is streaming, um, posting links to the stream as, as the reference in the comments. Um, and then, of course, afterwards, you can even do an overlay on your YouTube video by editing the video after it's finished recording and streaming. That, so what Tom is talking about is um, actually you have to be very uh, multitasked, right? You have to... Um, watch the streams coming up with the questions in the stream in all the shares that are happening right of your post or your hangout you have to watch the comments that are um, happening on the side in the chat and um, also pay attention to what's happening in the hangout and so one way of doing this is using lower low hangout lower third where you can actually on the fly and tell maybe we want to show that you can change um, the text on your lower third so if you're uh, referencing for something you can just change it on fly and people can pick it up. There you go. <laughs> okay, so change it just to show my location. That's another great thing you can do uh, when entering a newscast or broadcast with people from all over the place, identify where you are. So you don't really have to be a graphic designer. You can have an image like I have with my little avatar, or you can just use uh, Hangout Lower Third, like Tom does and a lot of people here are doing, to point to any information that you want during the Hangout. Um, another way, another extension to track all the comments and manage your Hangouts is Comment Tracker. And that will allow you to get all the comments that are happening on all of your posts everywhere into your Hangout. So you can um, comment on them or reference them or answer any questions that are coming up. Any other extensions that we can add to the Hangouts to make them better, Tom? Uh, well, there, there are other capabilities that are being developed. There is um uh, if I can locate it here, there is a uh, extension that allows you a little bit more moderation for control of the. Um, I can't find it now. Um, <laughs> it's called Pro Studio. Allows you a little more further moderation for Hangouts on air. The ability to to blank out people or to to mute people remotely. Um, and then there's a, another one built in, um, not necessarily for the broadcast purpose, but for your own. Comfort, it's, it's called a volume control module, and it allows you to turn up or turn down all the participants in the, in the Hangout for your own load listening volume. So that's important because, like we said, we want to get the best audio, and some people have background noise, and that might interfere. So we talked about the settings, the tools, uh, the cameras, the setup, the background, the audios, um, the extensions, setting it, everything up, knowing what you're going to talk about, what URLs you want to put in uh, your extensions, and the next thing is probably testing. Very important stuff. Yeah, it, you know, if you're if you're doing particularly if you're doing a um, remote broadcast or you have a uh, VIP, whether it be a business or entertainment celebrity or something like that. You want to make sure you're able to present, you know, your your star, your guest speaker, in, in the best possible light, and and no pun intended with the word light there. You you actually do want to make sure you have the right lighting, as we talked about. Um, but making sure their their internet connection is is adequate. Um, you almost always want to be wired into your internet connection, you know, as opposed to going wireless. Um, exceptions are, of course, limitations on reach if you're outside doing something remote. Um, and, and likewise, if you're tethering over a wireless network, um, you can get great performance, but you're best tethering directly to your phone or, or your, your hotspot device if you can. Um, I, I do it frequently using using the, the Verizon 4G, and I get great performance using using that out in the field. Uh, so you want to test, you know, first your own connection, the one that is, is going to be hosting the Hangout. Um, ultimately needs to have a really good connection because that's the one that's feeding the stream to YouTube. 
uh, and then making sure all of your participants in the Hangout, if, if you don't know or if you know they're not experienced with Hangouts prior to it, um, making sure and testing each one uh, prior to going live is, is, a, is a real good idea. Yes, and we've, uh, we've seen a few failures. Um, you know, even the big stars have internet connection issues. So don't feel bad if that happens to you. You know, if, uh, any, if anything happens during the Hangout, you can just apologize. You know, wait for the person to come back. Fill in the gaps with whatever conversation. You can open it up and have a discussion. It's not um, one-way broadcasting TV that everything has to be perfect. It's more informal interaction. Um, so just you know, have fun. <laughs> Don't worry about it too much. And um, after you've tested, after you set up everything uh, the way you want it, the next thing would be to promote your Hangout. So let's talk about two ways of doing this. Uh, we can promote it for business, and we can promote it for personal uh, use. So how would you do that for business? What good advice would you give businesses to promote their Hangouts? Well, and, and depending on the, on the use for a business, you know, if it's something that um, uh, you have um, a, a live event planned with, uh, you know, a band or something like that coming in, um, you might want to do something on your own website. You might want to do something at your at your place of business. If you're using it for an online business and um, looking to generate traffic from your mailing list or, or followers on, on your blog, um, simply doing that, putting out one announcement uh, you know, a week in advance, another one a couple days in advance, and then something the day that you're, you're actually going to do it. Um, there are several good uh, uh, groups or brand pages being built on Google Plus right now uh, that, that allow people to go in there and promote their, their hangouts just by posting right in those groups. There's also um, a website that, okay, I'm sorry, before that, we need to remember that we are in an international village right now. So the people that are watching your Hangout might not be in the, tam in the same time zone that you're promoting your Hangouts. So if you say, hey, I'm going to have a Hangout at 11 a.m., you need to also specify what time zone you are. And you need to remember, you know, we have Europe, we have Australia, we have Africa. So there is a website, and I'll share that on the screen, that allows you to um, schedule your Hangout at the time, at your local time, and then it will show the time across the world that people can see exactly when the Hangout is happening, and they can also add it to their calendar. And I'm assuming, hopefully in the future, you'll be able to add your Hangout to your calendar right there from Google+. But until that happens, <laughs> um, um, there's, a, there's a website, and I'll share that with you. That's Timeshare, and you can find that on my stream. So remembering the time zones for everybody, um, remembering that we're an international village, and that everybody comes from a different culture, and we should respect their um, mannerism <laughs> of it. Um, in that way, we can have like very good hangouts that are not disturbing, or nobody gets offended, or <laughs> we say something wrong. Um, so, you, like Tom said, you can promote your hangouts um, on your blog, on your stream, in your mailing list. Right? You can add a link on your website directly to show uh, to join the hangout. And should we talk about how people run their Hangouts? Usually do they have like a panel of people and only let that panel uh, speak? Or do they let people come in and out or they rotate them like Amanda Blaine is doing and Daria is doing? What, what are good ways to do that? Um, wow, that's, that's another good question. And, and we could probably do a whole show just talking about the different options and, and practices for that. Um, the most common is to do much like we're doing here. You have one, two, maybe three different um, uh, panelists that are able to share some information, whether it be about their specific industry, their use of you know, technology or Hangouts. Um, doing a, a little presentation, um, you can you know, incorporate the use of, of uh, pictures. Um, if you own the copyrighted music or materials, you can, you can share that. Um, and, and I guess I'm going to put that out there as a side note while we're at it is, is when doing Hangouts on air, you have to be very careful, very disciplined about not using copyrighted material, whether it be directly in your broadcast or even in the background, music playing in the background, even video running in the background. You know, you, you could theoretically violate a lot of copyright laws if, if there was a TV set with a, a Disney movie playing in the background or an NFL football game being broadcast, so you, so you need to be conscious of those things. Um, 
Does that apply also for any YouTube videos that you bring into the Hangout? Well, at present, you can't stream a YouTube video back out through the audio function. I don't know. I, you know, I don't work for Google. I can't speak for them. I, I don't know if that's going to be incorporated or not. Personally, I would like to see that because as an educational tool, I'd like to take my training videos and then be able to show those in a Hangout on Air and share it with the class to perform them. I, um, I actually added, uh, when I was interviewing TJ Marchetti, the Vice President of Walt Disney, I brought in a YouTube video about one of their um, ads that they did for the Muppets movie. And uh, so two things happened. One, we were able to show it by sharing my screen. But two, I wasn't able to monetize it. So if you're later on thinking of monetizing your Hangout videos, if you have any content in the Hangout that you did not create, you won't be able to monetize that. That includes uh, music, YouTube, images, anything else. And I think, I might be wrong, but I think humans are watching your Hangouts. And so they're catching that stuff. So keep that in mind if you ever want to monetize um, you know, your Hangouts here. Digressing back to the formats and, and what people might do, you know, starting out like this as a panelist, um, you, you likewise, you might bring in a group of five or six, um, maybe as many as eight or ten people that are all um, knowledgeable and proficient or active in one area. Um, you know, one of the things we're going to be seeing quite a bit more of in the, in the near future, being an election year in the United States, is probably political town hall or, or forum type uh, things like that, possibly even organized debates. Um, so there, there's a lot of different formats you can use. Um, do you, would you have a moderator for your Hangouts if you were, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it makes things flow much easier if you can have a person who has um, experience in uh, what, what anybody who's watching this, if, they, if they're not experienced in Hangouts, along with the video that you're seeing here, there's a chat box on the side that the people inside the Hangout can use to communicate while the Hangout is going. And what you would do with a moderator is that person can use that to remind people to mute their mics on entering. They can use that to ask if somebody's got questions, um, kind of the equivalent of somebody saying, you know, may I ask the next question type thing, and the moderator can cue them up and say, you know, okay, you thought you're next, okay, Tom, you're next, um, that, that type of thing, and, and give people a heads up and organize it. Um, Likewise, with uh, you know, if you open a Hangout on air up to public, you you always have the the um, possibility of somebody with with technical difficulties or causing trouble coming in, and that moderator can usually be quicker on the trigger to uh, to block that person and, and stop them, uh, as opposed to the the host or the speaker that might be talking at the moment. From your experience, how many people open Hangouts on air to the public? Um, I'm, I'm going to say somewhere in the, in the and, and this is you know pure speculation, I'm going to say somewhere in the 20 or 25 percent range. Um, we've seen it happen with some of the, the very big name celebrities and um, it was kind of a train wreck. And, and then alternatively, you know, the process if you're not going to open it to public is properly vetting the people that you're going to have in the hangout. And um, when that's done, you can, you can post a message to the stream. Um, the example I use here is, is Conan O'Brien. The Conan O'Brien people did a really excellent job of putting together his, his first Hangout on air. They, they asked for people to post questions on the stream. They selected four or five people. They had them in the Hangout in advance, tested all their connections, um, made sure those people were presentable on camera. And then uh, Conan had his producer in the Hangout in occupying one seat, and they had another camera set for his desk in his, uh, in his office. And uh, so that, that producer was able to, to, to go through the introduction of the people in the Hangout, um, bring in Conan, and guide them through asking each one, asking a question. It, it worked very well. And Google has that one listed on the Hangouts tab. If you go to the Hangouts tab right now, um, they're showing that one as, as a featured Hangout. So, so, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about how do you find Hangouts. If you're new here and this is the first time you're probably watching this or wanting to participate in a Hangout, um, you should know that only 10 people can be in the panel. And when that's full, um, you can try to uh, jump into the Hangout again if people drop in and that happens with... Um, <laughs> Sorry, kids. Um, 
So <laughs> I was like talking about hangouts, best practices. So I'm going to let you talk about etiquette and get the kids out of here. Um, yeah, et etiquette. I guess you know the um, the same the same practices you might use that that apply in public. If you walk into a conversation at a at a cafe where you know several friends, or you might know a couple people and a couple strangers, um, you know approach the enter the hangout and and um, uh, be quiet until you are either uh, greeted or there's a pause where you can you know say hi and introduce yourself. Um, that's you know the, the same way it works in a hangout. If if you enter a hangout, you greet people. You know, prior to our going down the air, everybody said said hello to each other and here that type of thing. Um, the dress appropriately. You know, we've had people show up in in a hangout on air and then show up with without a shirt on. Um, you know, culturally it might be acceptable, and if it's a casual thing where where they are. But if it's a business hangout or being streamed around the world, in some cultures that's not an acceptable way to be seen in public. Um, so you know, dress dress appropriate for the uh, for the topic or, or the uh, uh, decorum of, of whatever the event is. If it's a if it's a streaming business conference and jacket and tie are, are the norm, I'd, I'd recommend doing that. You know, here where many of us are in, in home offices or studios, um, you know, casual attire is quite acceptable. Um, what would you say about? Um, interrupting or you know you have an idea or you have a question and you just jump in and you're like hey my question is or you give your opinion while other people are talking um, it depends again on the host and the topic you know in, in some instances that might be acceptable um, as as you know we're, we're doing right here the people on the stream can't see the, the people in this hangout were are having a pretty active conversation in the chat and coming up with suggestions and questions, and um, so that's a great way. You know, the, the first step, I guess, if you're in the hangout, is is to post a question there, um, and then if it's something really critical or you see a a major technical problem, um, you know, maybe maybe your host loses their connection or, or has an interruption and needs to go away for a little bit, you you jump in and fill that uh, that airspace. And we just had a great example of that. <laughs> so we just showed you what to do when you know you have interruptions in the hangout. Um, personal uses of hangout. Stephanie Wanamaker is having game nights and trivia nights on hangouts, and they're usually full. And I haven't participated in one, even though I really wanted to do that. Have you, Tom? I'm sorry, I lost your audio just for a split second there. Did you oh, do you do you participate in any of Stephanie's uh, game night trivia nights? I, I have not. I've, I've watched some, and, and they look great. They look fun. Um, we've seen people doing trivia. We've seen people doing using the Scoot and Doodle sketch pad to do uh, the equivalent of, of Pictionary, or as people, many people know these days, is, is draw something. You can kind of play that in there. Um, uh, and, and then you know, personal things you can do with it. There's, a, there's actually a, a Texas fold of poker that many people can play. Um, but there, there are other add-ins that can be used for, for business apps as well. Um, you can, you can, you know, share Google Docs between between all the participants in a Hangout. Extremely powerful tool. Collaboration. We've, we've had people literally um, build entire businesses and organize entire businesses through here. Um, literally writing your corporate charter by sharing the document with with the people that are involved in the Hangout. Um, there's an add-in called Kaku, and that allows you to do um, schematics, flow charting, um, you can use it for doing uh, diagrams, wiring diagram type functions into your design layout with furniture placement. Um, we've used it for storyboarding, for planning video shoots. Um, so it's, it's really, really powerful. So you bring up a great point. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of people think that Hangouts and Hangouts on Air are kind of like presenting you know, an idea or having kind of like a TV show or broadcast uh, show, but you can use it for internal uses, and that will save you on meeting times and travel times, and you can work internationally with people all over the world. So basically, Hangouts and Google Doc created a tiny village that allows you to work with anyone anywhere. And so that's one thing that people might not know about Hangouts. You know, we only think that it's like a broadcast, and it's my way to have my own TV channel. And so there are other uses for that. Personal, um, you know, you can use it. I think uh, Kathy, I can't remember her last name. She used it for a wedding to show uh, her <clears throat> her son's wedding. 
to the other uh, family that wasn't able to attend. Um, you can use it like Tom was saying for collaborations, for work, for recording, um, and of course for what we're doing right now, presenting ideas. And for personal use, just games. I mean, this is the best way to connect with, uh, make new friends on Google+. People that you didn't know, now you have something in common and you're just sharing great time online, which is awesome. Um, so we talked about etiquette, we talked about how to find Hangouts, we talked about how to interact on the threads, in the stream, and in the chat. We talked about promoting your Hangouts, what technical uh, tools you need to have the best Hangouts to make sure that you test it. What are um, Hangout ideas that you've seen out there that are catching up or that businesses should use? Well, um, you know, first and foremost, one of the, the ways I'm most excited is, is using it for classes. You know, we've, we've already had people in here teaching uh, cooking classes, yoga lessons, guitar lessons, piano lessons, language lessons. Um, I've, I've heard of, I've not yet seen it, but I've heard of a, a, a needlepoint, a, a knitting or crochet group that get in here and, and teach each other how to do different stitches, things like that. Um, for businesses, you know, I believe we're going to see a great use of this when businesses are introducing new products. One of the, the best examples to date was um, Dell when they were releasing one of their new Alienware computers. They had an engineer um, with the, the computer actually, you know, in, the, in the, the lab showing the computer there. They had one of their social media managers in to serve as producer or moderator. And then they also had one of their um, corporate level salespeople who was able to answer more of the marketing questions than the engineer could do. So that was a great example of a, a big company using a hangout for a, a complex product and, and being able to open up to the public. People just kind of came in, asked their questions, and, and rotated through and, and continued watching as others asked questions. That's awesome. Um, there are some questions in the stream, so we are at the half hour mark. We're going to open it up. And we'll take some questions from the stream. One of them was, can you publish the Hangout URL before you start a Hangout? And you can. It's a little complicated. Is there an easy way to do that, Tom? Um, that, that depends <laughs> on, your, on your level of, of tech proficiency. Um, what happens is when you set up the Hangout on here, you are very first given the, the moderator is shown what's referred to as the embed code, and, and that is, in effect, going to allow people to put a link to create an iframe on their website. If, if anybody isn't familiar with that, it's, it's simple to look up um, you know, how to use a YouTube embed code. Um, so you can take that code and put that on your website um, as soon as it's published. Each Hangout right now comes up with a new URL. That embed code has to be done for each Hangout that you do. Um, another way that you can do it is to actually get into a, a little more complicated um, using a subdomain. If, if yefotcohen.com was, was your name, you could perhaps create a subdomain live.yefotcohen.com and map that to your website and then have it automatically pick up the embed URL when your Hangout goes live. And it's a, it's a little... It's a little complicated, but the, the best way to do it is actually to set up your website to watch for the announcement of a live Hangout in a tweet. So if anybody's got questions about that, I can, I can help a little bit more after on, on the thread of, of the EFAS video. Um, is that that's a, that point? That's a, great, um, that's a great idea. And actually, I think that when Google makes the API a lot easier to embed, then businesses will, can really benefit from doing Hangouts because all the traffic will go to their website where they can also point to their services, their products, have the comments there. All the interaction will happen on your website. So even though Google Plus is like a great place to meet people and interact with them, you probably want to channel that traffic to your website for sales. And so hopefully that API <laughs> will become uh, more developed faster. Um, another good idea in the stream for Hangouts is journalism, classes, collaborative meetings, um, citizen discussions. There are um, positive and negative aspects for that, right, for political discussions on Google+. And so take that at your own risk. <laughs> but it's definitely a place that you can do that. Um, any other questions, guys? You can 
open the mic and feel free to interact. I, I have I have one other thing I'd like to, to add on. Prior to the hangout, somebody posted on on my thread announcing this. They they asked if there was a way to not record a YouTube live video. And what happens is YouTube automatically records any hangout on air. And after your hangout is completed, it goes through a process what's referred to as rendering, preparing the video to be streamed for YouTube viewers to watch on demand. You can go in, the owner of that video can go in and mark that video as private right after the hangout is over, and that'll keep that video from being able to be viewed if, if they so want to, to prevent somebody from watching it after the fact. That's a that's very important point. Uh, we were able to do that at the beginning, and it would record just when you started the Hangout, which was great for creating classes, right? Private classes and uh, recording ideas and meetings and ideas. So hopefully Google will bring it back. I liked it. Uh, but until then, you know, you can, um, I don't know, maybe you should have a private page that you only invite, you know, certain people to the public Hangout that doesn't get a lot of views if you wanted to do something private and record it on YouTube. Um, or maybe, you know, you can just use Camtasia and record your screen and do like a public, like a private hangout, not on air, if you want to do that. Any other ideas, Tom? Well, um, it, it, as far as actually sharing the, the, uh, the, the stream, you know, I guess that, that goes back to asking all the participants in your hangout to share it publicly in their own stream when your hangout goes live. Because what will happen is, is, you know, if, if they're in the, in the hangout, people see that they're more apt to either watch the Hangout or, or share it as well to help, um, spread the word about that person and, and, and what they're teaching. Awesome. Any questions from the stream, guys? Feel free to open your mics and jump in. Any other suggestions, comments, anything that we can improve the Hangouts? Headphones. Headphones are a great way to get rid of the echo, that the ambient echo that happens from time to time when somebody will walk into a hangout um, because they have speakers and they have a microphone that, that's typically on their laptop and they're so close to one another and they, they sort of, the microphone records other people's sounds and it creates a sort of feedback loop kind of thing. So having headphones goes a long way to the more peaceful sounding hangouts. That's excellent point, yeah. Um, I, I normally actually travel with two pair of headphones, so if I'm going to be doing, um, you know, a remote with a guest somewhere, um, I've always got a, a splitter and an extra pair with me. If I'm going to have two people sitting on camera, you can still use that same single camera, single mic, but still have two, uh, two people on headphones able to listen and, and prevent that feedback or accuracy. So that's, that's definitely an excellent point. Mike Elgin shared... Um, an experiment with a new headset that he received. Uh, I think it's called the Boom. And that was wonderful. It's $300. Uh, but if you want to create professional hangouts, uh, it might be worth it. It's called the Boom E, and it has a noise canceling uh, feature. And he was in a Starbucks, and you could not hear the noise in the Starbucks at all. Wow. So that might be um, something that you want to look into if you have to do very professional hangouts. <coughs> Any other suggestion? Oh, uh, one question. How do you, can you sell tickets to your Hangouts? <laughs> <laughs> not at present. Not when they're going out through YouTube live to the public. Um, now, in theory, you could sell tickets to be one of the participants in the Hangout. You know, if you have Wolfgang Puck in here doing a cooking class, um, a number of people still might pay, be willing to pay to participate in, in being a guest and then are able to interact with Wolfgang Puck teaching that while it was still streamed live uh, free charge to everybody. If you want to do it though, if you, if you want to stream a Hangout uh, for profit and sell tickets, um, you're really not going to use Hangouts on air. You, you get into using something like uh, uh, Ustream, Livestream, Justin.t, something like that. It's going to get your own private channel where you can control the consumer. Um, another way that you could do that is you could use the Hangout on air as an event and, you know, talking like a webinar and talking about your future classes and then sell tickets to that. Point them to your website or, um, you know, have a link on the bottom under your Hangout telling people that if they want more information, they can go and get that. Um, other than that, you can also create the Hangout on Air and then remove the video and sell tickets to that 
Hangout if you wanted to. I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> you can try. How to sell. How to sell without selling. <laughs> Invite them to the Hangout and then be like, oh, psych. <laughs> For more information, you have to go there. <laughs> Hey, Yipa, I, I see that we could probably use it with our email lists and mm -hmm. you know, with our regular subscribers and tell them, hey, look, we're having a hangout today concerning moving to Panama or whatever, whatever else that we're doing, and just use our email list. And that way it's already monetized. Yep. Yeah, you can do that. You can also, if you are um, an authority, right, and nobody ever gets a chance to talk to you, you can use the Hangout as a way for you to connect with your audience. You know, if you have a mailing list of, I don't know, 500 people and, you know, you're too busy to ever talk to anyone, this will be a great way for them to know you and ask you questions. So you can use that as a way to connect better with your followers or you can sell tickets for like a private Hangout, you know, just 10 of your best followers or if you buy my stuff, you can get to hang out with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, there are questions at the stream. Uh, John... Kasson, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is asking Tom if you look directly at the camera or do you have it set like that that it looks as if you're looking at the screen? Right, right. I just answered him in the stream there, but yeah, I, I, I'm looking, I'm, I'm making a conscious effort to look right at the camera when I'm, when I'm talking like this. Um, I do have it though, that picture that I showed with the tripod, I, I do have it. In fact, I can give you a little demo here to show you how close it is just clearing the top of my of my laptop. So I've, I've mounted the camera to just clear the top of the laptop to give me the most natural line of sight if I'm looking down to the text or the screen to, to try to make that less obvious. Um, and, it, and that brings up another good point too. One of the things that we are also working on and, and we're going to put it out free are videos that will teach people um, best on camera practices and we even have a uh, professional makeup artist who's going to do an educational video to teach both men and women how to uh, uh, best use makeup for, uh, for appearance on camera. And uh, those will be ready pretty quick too. That's really important for those new C920 cameras with the 1080p. They're not really kind, particularly to us, to us guys, but there you have it. <laughs> I mean, I if everybody was as beautiful as he thought, you know, I mean, it would all be okay, right? But no. Precisely. Wouldn't, wouldn't the Lord did not we, bless me. So <laughs> Come on, yeah. Anthony. There's no shame in putting on makeup. You know, actors do that. <laughs> you use, you know, enhance your natural features as a guy. That's totally right. fine. <laughs> um, another question is, anyone has used Bluetooth headsets? And I'm thinking Mike, well, Mike wasn't Bluetooth. Anyone use Bluetooth? Yeah, there's, I've seen a couple people use them. There, there's a nice pair by Logitech. Um, I've been looking at using those because I've been streaming some car shows, and car shows obviously um, can get very loud with some of the some of the hot rod large engines and stuff like that running around you. Um, it, they they appear to work really well in in loud environments, and it's reported that they get five to six hours uh, talk time on a, on a single charge. So. That, that would be real practical for my instances. There's, um, Tom, you want to talk about what you're doing with bands because this is, I think, taking it to the next level where you're actually wiring an entire club in order to showcase um, music bands, right? Yeah, you know, the, the stuff um, we've, we've got one local club here just outside, and I'm literally in the process of a remodel and putting in a state-of-the-art sound and light system. And we're also building in um, multiple cameras so that we can have a complete switching system to do hangouts on air, hangout concerts, um, right from in that venue with cameras mounted uh, strategically all kinds of great places. And then there'll be a large uh, TV display right up on the stage off to the side so the entire time the band is playing they can look over and see what's going on in the hangout and then if they actually want to interact with people in the hangout the, um, the soundboard, the mixers will have control to be able to turn on the, uh, the audio from the hangout to talk to the band. So I th this is kind of, I, we had a discussion about this a while back, would you watch concerts from your home if you could? Would that be the same experience? What do you guys think? 
No, but there are some pluses from, you know, watching them at home. You know, you don't have to worry about stepping on garbage or getting somebody else's drink spilled on you or... or parking. Parking or, you know... Driving drunk home. $300 <laughs> tickets. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the last... Con when Queen was touring I, in 2006, I think I paid $180 a ticket uh, to sit in the first, you know, eight rows or something like that. Uh, which was a great experience, but you know, for two people, was that you know, 360 bucks? <laughs> I mean, right. you know, that's a and, lot of gear you can buy. That we touched on touched on earlier. Google is working to improve the sound quality. You know, it would be great if we had nice high def video and, and stereo audio coming through here. Um, one of the constraints, of course, is every time Google cranks up the bandwidth capability of of the audio or the video through here, it affects millions of people's bandwidth consumption. So they have to be judicious in, in how much bandwidth they use in, in the app. Um, they, they've improved the audio codec. Um, for, for those who don't know what that is, that's what takes your audio and compresses it into a digital format to uh, um, transfers it through and then uncompresses it at the other end. And, and they've increased the capability or the, the frequency range of that tremendously. Um, but one of the, the ways that the concerts, you know, doing concerts through Hangouts, um, it's, it's perhaps not always so much about the sound quality you get, but the live interaction with the band, or the band being able to see, you know, their, their audience. Um, one example of how we used it, uh, in December from the International Fairs and Expos Conference in Vegas, in the hospitality suite with, real pretty with the, the Vegas Strip as the backdrop, we had a VA system set up and bands were able to play there and we were streaming it out through Hangout and booking agents from fairs and festivals were able to watch the band and then if they wanted to join the Hangout they could interact with the band. You know, they can listen to the audio, the electronic press kit or the SoundCloud recordings of a band and get an idea of how good their sound can be but to see how they perform on stage and how they work with the audience, um, that's that's almost equally important for them. So it was, it was real valuable that way. I think this is like, um, you know, I, I always say I think Google is going to change the world. I think Hangouts are going to change the world. You can interact with people from all over the world with, you know, no barriers and no fear of them hurting you or doing something or, you know, all the privacy fears that we have. So a lot of people I hear are afraid to join public Hangouts or open public Hangouts. And I would actually encourage it because you never know who you're going to meet and that's a good thing. <laughs> if you meet someone that you don't like, just block them, uncircle them. You know, it's not, they don't have to be in your face all the time, but you might run into amazing people. And the best relationships, you know, start in Hangouts. Uh, I met Tom in a Hangout, I think, where uh, you shaved his head and you were in the middle of streaming a uh, car show. I met Sarah Hill on a hangout that she was doing, Mike Elgin as well, P.O. It's beautiful. I mean, the relationships that you can create through hangouts with people that you never know what you have in common with until you hang out with them. Um, I would risk saying that <laughs> uh, I'll give two examples of a good hangout and a bad hangout in my opinion. Uh, Tony Robbins' first hangout was kind of like a TV show where they brought in uh, people that went through his course to give their testimonials, they didn't interact, they did not ask any questions, there was, it was just like watching one of his YouTube videos. Tiger Woods, uh, on the other hand, was just lounging in his porch <laughs> and you were just like hanging out with Tiger Woods asking him questions about the grass and his swing and everything else. So when you do that, remember, hangouts are very interactive, they're very fun and even though you're presenting something, it doesn't have to be a one-way show or, or a one-way communication. And I think maybe opening it up and having other people, and I'm encouraging people here in the Hangout to speak up and tell me what you think, if you agree or disagree with me, but um, opening it up like that will add to your Hangout and not just, you know, reduce it to a TV content. What do you guys think? In fact, um, this is Marilyn from Silicon Valley, and I, I agree with you completely. First of all, I, I am... 100% sure that, that Hangouts are changing the world um, and, you know, opening up, uh, you know, resources that I, I never had before. Um, but I would, in my opinion, I think for people who are a little bit shy about Hangouts, it's good to start with 
a known known group, somebody who's sponsoring a, a, a hangout like yourself, or and then you know meet their friends, and it just goes on and on, and pretty soon it's all good. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. And and so when you want to start your first hangout, and you go to the hangout tab on your profile, you can see how many people are hanging out. And if you just want to sit on the you know on the side and watch and see what's happening. Join a group that has maybe six people. They'll have something to talk about. You can listen, see if you like it. If you have something to add, add to it. If not, leave and go to another hangout. It's mm. <laughs> nothing personal. Nobody's going to get offended. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's been my experience that um, some of the more experienced people that are running hangouts uh, will you know, welcome new people, ask about them, and get them a little bit started, just like any conversation. Uh, you know, those opening questions, uh, you know, you find out their interests, and uh, if you decide to circle them after that, then you know a little bit about them and know where to, where to place them in your circles. So um, I'm going to put you, Bess, on the spot. <laughs> 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 because you are just uh, <laughs> saying the opposite of what I'm saying. You're saying don't open it up to the public. And I say always open it up to the public. So why do you say don't open it up? <laughs> uh, okay, can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, um, I open it to the public in my invitations, but not when it's hangout time. You yeah, know what right. that is. You get unsavory experiences. <laughs> Did you have a bad experience in a hangout? Oh yeah, accidentally. Instead of opening up to my circles, I had I opened up to the public. I, I, I just wasn't thinking, you know. Um, so we had about 40 people come in and out, and nearly all of them were <laughs> uh, weird people. <laughs> and one guy exposing himself and everything. So um, <laughs> wow, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> so I tell I tell people on my invitations to um, make sure that they want to be added to my circle for that topic, the MLM support group. Make sure they added that they let me know when they that they want to be in my MLM circle so that I can invite them only. And you're also topic specific, right? You're looking specifically for network marketers. So anyone else that is not a network marketer is not really in your target market and you don't want them in the hangout. Um, some people have joined anyway friends and they had a really they got a lot of benefit from it because it's like a brainstorming mastermind support group for businesses. But my target, yeah, it's specifically for network marketers. This is. So would it be safe to say that if you don't have a target market and you are inviting the entire world, it's okay to open it up to the public? <laughs> I imagine they would give an av get an avalanche like I did of people that was just, it was just um, half total, total crazy surface. Couldn't talk, you couldn't do anything, people you know, butting in and having background noise, and it was horrible. Wow. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, yeah. I, can, I, I, can I just ask Bess just to just to repeat what she does in terms of the invites to uh, to her hangout, how she controls it? Sure. I make every announcement invitation always open to the public, and I have a little paragraph in there that says, if you'd like, this is by invitation only, so if you'd like an invitation to it, let me know you want to be in my MLM circle so I can send you an invitation at the time of the Hangout. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So, so, so you get the, you get a, quite a nice big uh, group of people to, to see it, so you get that, 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 that good uh, you know, spread of uh, eyeballs on your invite, and then you can have a nice selected people that actually join in the end. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, thanks. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very interesting experience. I never had that experience before, so maybe I, I should consider myself lucky. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> and, um, but, but this is actually a way that you were talking about how to monetize your Hangouts. And you know, this is basically you're building your list of people who are interested in what you're doing and want to get notifications from you about the Hangouts that you're having. And then we're having the three-step sales of Lewis right here. Who are that in the chat? How can you monetize your Hangouts? Um, so he said the first one is invite them to a Hangout. And in the Hangout, invite them to get um, exclusive content in your mailing list to join your mailing list. And then after in your mailing list, you make an offer. So it's like a three-step way to get people on your mailing list and interested in what you're doing. Yes, no, any comments, guys? Chop in. It's not just me we're talking. <laughs> You've got five more minutes to express yourself. <laughs> I think that's good for artists. 
because like I um, I've been noticing like the trend of of what artists are doing for hangouts, like doing concerts or um, artists in the plus is a great site. Like they're fundraising right now. They have like over a hundred artists, and you're getting exposed to artists. So I think it's it's great for artists to learn how to monetize. I'm trying to help. The goal, that's what the goal of my site is um, that I'm building, is to help artists monetize with, like, with sites or applications such as um, Hangouts. I think it's a struggle a little bit, because for arts, everyone wants to, uh, everyone wants it for free. Like, no one wants to pay for music, necessarily. That's why downloading is so popular and Spotify popular apps. So I think this is um, a good topic discussion, especially for managers who want to represent artists that are doing these things for free, and how maybe advertising would somehow get involved in this, like another third ha hangout, or the lower third, but like having sponsors, I guess, for hangouts, that would be kind of cool. Right. We, we just saw maybe the first of that on a, on a large scale last week when Dario Must did a concert from a rooftop in New York City with Verizon Wireless as the sponsor. Oh, wow. I don't know fully what the, you know, to what extent, That's but they listed as the official sponsor of, of the concert. And, um, you know, a couple other ways. One of the ways that, that has, this has kind of been used for monetizing is, is one of the artists on here is a, uh, a speed painter by the name of Cliff yeah. Long, And he did a Kickstarter. Right? To raise funds for a new project, and he did some marathon speed painting uh, hangouts where anybody who contributed to the Kickstarter project got to go into those hangouts and, and have their picture done. Um, so that's that's one good example of how you could use uh, a combining hangouts with a monetization method. So there's a, that's a great point because we were talking with Mike Elgin before also and with Sarah Hill and everybody's talking about how to monetize it, how to monetize it. And I think that's the mindset coming from Facebook and Twitter and other social media sites. So you have two layers here, right? You have the layer of just personal connections where you just want to meet people, hang out with them, make friends, share ideas, work, maybe collaborate with Google Docs. And then there is the next level where you monetize it. And I think the first level has to come first. And I don't know if Google Plus is at the monetization level just yet. No, yeah. definitely not. I, I don't think it is. I mean, I've been around a Hangouts from the beginning. And I've talked to lots of people and had, you know, lots of deep discussions about social media. And I don't know that you monetize the, the network or the market that you're on so much as you monetize yourself using whatever arena you're at, right? Uh, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, but I, I don't know that you monetize the market. I think you, you, hopefully you create a brand organically and you have ways extant G Plus to monetize yourself, whether you're, you're selling a product or a service or, you know, whatever. But I really think the best way to use Hangouts is just to meet people. I meet, I meet people from Spain and France and, and you know, Mallorca and uh, all these different places, you know, Israel... China, Korea, Japan. I mean, it really forces you to start getting out that Rosetta Stone and learning some new languages, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know. We're waiting for Google to incorporate Translate right into the into the Hangout for us. No, it's no, don't rob yourself right? of the of that time to learn those beautiful new language skills, right? You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm dusting off my Chinese I haven't used for over 20 years from back in my college days, and and it's horrible. I can, you know, but um, but at least I'm trying. It's a lot of fun. But one thing I would say is if you're going to spend any time on Hangouts, like I spend way too much time on Hangouts because I work from home. Um, and I've, I've been here, I don't know when Hangouts really started, but I think I came here like a month after it started and I've been here kind of since the beginning. But one of the best things I ever did was a couple months in as I purchased a microphone and a USB box. Uh, uh, um, you know, I think we talked earlier about having a USB mic that plugs in directly into the computer. Yeah, I mean, that's good for some things, but more often than not, you get a sort of tinny, hollow sound. Uh, but if you get a USB box, which is about 80 to 90 bucks typically, you, if you spend too much, you could spend 150 bucks. Um, but this microphone here looks a lot more impressive than it was. It was actually like $50 at Guitar Center. And it's a condenser mic. And the cool thing about it is, is that it's, um, it's a mic that allows you to adjust the patterns of where it picks up the sound which is great for everybody else in the room, right? Because they don't hear all of the background noise that's coming from all over the place. 
you know, or if you're using your laptop mic, you'll hear all that sort of ambient a hard drive hiss that comes from your computer itself. So just as a favor to everybody else, if you're going to be on for a long time, um, you know, because I've noticed a trend where people are starting to buy these things and they, they, they look much, much more impressive than they are. I mean, 50 bucks is not a big deal for, for most people anyway. So I would consider investing in it because it just makes the, 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 the experience better for everyone. And when I hear people with better mics, it, it makes it better for me. So I think it's cool. Um, That's true, and then the other side of it is like we spoke at the beginning, is turning it into an MP3 later on and allowing people to download that, and that right. might be either yeah. a service or monetization. And you don't need like a Behringer mixer or whatever that like Ufot has. I mean, that, that, they're not particularly expensive either, but they are. They they, they look cool and they're, they're a little bit complicated looking. She's got a, that a, a interesting setup there, but you really just need uh, what they call an M box. Uh, the, I recommend. You know, something like the Proson uh, Presonus USB VSL 2x2, or I hate this one. This is a horrible thing. Um, it's bad for a lot of reasons. But you can get the Focusrite, uh, the Scarlet 2x2 USB, uh, USB preamp. It's USB directly into your computer. But the cool thing is, is that you can adjust, you know, the gain, the volume, um, all that other cool stuff. So I recommend getting a mic. That's true. Yeah, I second that. Very solid advice. Yes. Um, if there are no other questions, we are going to sum this hangout up. Oh. But, <laughs> but don't ahead. leave. I've just, mess, I've, just, I've just met most of you. Stay. <laughs> okay, I can stay. I'm working from home. Just, so. just because the hangout on air portion is over doesn't mean you have to leave. There you I go. Know. I'll make sure the best secrets to those who paid to get in. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much, Tom. That was such solid advice. Anthony as well. Thank you so much. Hopefully, none of the people watching will ever have the experience that Bess had, but only good experiences like we have. Hmm. And um, this Thursday at 11 a.m., we are talking about the American dream, and we're going to give an example of a guy who came here to the States and started from nothing and became like a very successful entrepreneur. So join us Thursday at 11 a.m. <laughs> Yeah. That will be monetization. If you want social <laughs> online monetization, join this hangout. And, uh, well, thanks for having me, Eva. And, and if anybody has any other questions, they can post them out in the, in the stream. Um, I'll be happy to answer anything I can out there. And uh, hope, this, uh, hope this helps everybody be more successful with their hands. Thank you, Tom. And yes, guys, the conversation will continue. So keep it up. We'll see you later. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Bye now.